so hello, welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to the first part of my October wrap up. Normally I only do one wrap up a month but this month I happen to read quite a lot of books somehow. My normal like monthly read is between like 8 to 12 books and somehow this month I read 18. I don't entirely know how that happened. I thought rather than uploading one like massive 20 minute video I would do two parts to my wrap up so the video you're watching now is going to be all about all the classics I read in October and then there will be a video up later which is all about all the contemporary books I read this month. So let's begin. So as you all know if you follow me on Facebook or Twitter, links down below, over my masters I gave up reading 19th century literature, mostly. Admittedly I did read the whole completed works of Jane Austen over my masters but that was only because of where I was working and I read them entirely at work when it was quiet, I did not read any of them at home. I also did read a few Dickens short stories but only like three or four so it's fine. I love 19th century literature, primarily 19th century British literature. I love the history of the period, I love like the themes that books from that period have. That century holds nearly all my favourite writers and I love it. And between the ages of about 13 and 20 I basically just read 19th century literature and I barely read anything else, which was lovely and wonderful. But then when I was at university I did a module on literature from 1945 to now and I discovered all these authors that I hadn't read before that actually I loved and I realised that I also really enjoy like contemporary literary fiction and other genres. So over my masters I decided to give up 19th century literature. This was partly, as I say, just to broaden my horizons and discover more books that I hadn't really considered before. It was also partly because I know I want to work in like publishing and the book Industry, and I figured it would be useful for me to be more aware of like the books that were coming out today rather than the books that came out like 150 years ago. It was also partly because I was doing a creative writing masters and I thought it would be more useful for my writing to read modern literature than to read 19th century literature. But my masters is over, I have missed 19th century literature and I'm reading it again. This month I read 18 books, 9 of them were from the long 19th century and 9 of them were contemporary reads and I'm gonna try and keep that kind of balance if I can because I don't want to get like tangled in the web of 19th century literature again like I had before. But anyway. So before I start talking in more depth, two of these books I read during the Dewey's 24 hour readathon. Those two books were Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll and The Lost World by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I really enjoyed reading both of these but I'm not going to talk about them that much here as I've already spoken about them in my readathon wrap up video which I will link down below. So other classics that I read this month. The first one is Charlotte Bronte's The Professor. I actually read this on Kindle but I have a very impressive pretty copy to show you. This I found on my parents shelves, I didn't even know they had it and it is from 1891. I love Charlotte Bronte, Villette and Jane Eyre are two of my favourite novels of all time and I realised last month that I hadn't read Charlotte Bronte's other books and I really should. So I haven't read Shirley yet but I did read The Professor which I really really enjoyed. The Professor is about a young Englishman who goes to Belgium to become a teacher in a school. I love Charlotte Bronte's writing and she has such a brilliant way of capturing characters and it deals with a lot of very interesting themes about like hard work and identity and that sort of thing. I did a full review on my blog which I will link down below. The reason why I didn't love The Professor as much as Jane Eyre and Villette is I think because it has a lot of the same themes as Villette. So Villette is about a young Englishwoman who goes to teach in a school in Belgium. It was written a little while after The Professor and Charlotte Bronte took a lot of her ideas in The Professor into Villette. The Professor is a much shorter novel than Villette and deals with a lot of very similar themes but not in as, quite as much depth and with not as much psychological complexity. So a lot of the things I loved about The Professor were things I love more in Villette and I think that are done better in Villette. So I did really enjoy it and it was really interesting to see like where the ideas for Villette came from because Villette is just one of my favourite novels of all time but I don't think as a novel in itself it is as polished or as like refined or as brilliant as Villette is. The next classic I read was The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. I can't believe it took me so long to discover H.G. Wells. I really like science fiction and I really like Victorian and 19th century literature so I can't believe it took me so long. However, I really enjoyed The Time Machine. It's the kind of frame narrative about a man who invents a time machine and goes many 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 years into the future and when he gets into the future he finds that humanity has sort of divided itself. One kind of evolution of humanity lives above ground and the other lives entirely underground. The theory put across is that the group of humans above ground have evolved from the aristocracy and the humans that live underground have evolved from the working classes. However what quickly becomes apparent is that the tables have kind of turned and it is the humans living underground that have the upper hand and really frighten and terrify and occasionally eat the people above ground. And it's really fascinating in terms of examining a lot of concerns that people had in the 19th century. A lot of concerns that kind of stem from Darwin in that if humans evolved from apes what could they turn into later. It's also a very interesting commentary on the social makeup of the 19th 
20th century and of like the aristocracy versus the working classes and I couldn't work out while reading the time machine if HG Wells was trying to say look at this awful class divide we have currently we've got to stop this kind of thing happening in the future or if he was like look the working classes are terrifying I just couldn't work out which it was either way it was a really really interesting book the next classic I read is The Warden by Anthony Trollope this novel follows the story of a clergyman who is appointed to be a warden over a kind of almshouse hospital place he gets paid a fairly decent salary to keep an eye on the inmates at the hospital and he is perfectly happy and content until someone questions his right to the money and whether or not the salary should be going to him or whether or not the money that was left to this institution in the will a very long time ago should actually be going to the inmates of the hospital not the warden i hope that makes sense it sounds like quite a convoluted premise i know but it is a book that is quite ingrained in like church politics of the 19th century it's also a lot about like morality and conscience and the difference between being like legally right and wrong and morally right and wrong i really enjoyed it but i don't think it's a good place to start with anthony trollope and i don't think it's a good place to start with victorian literature this book as someone that loves victorian literature and history and is really interested in all of like the stuff going on at the time i really enjoyed but i think if you haven't read that much victorian literature or you're not that interested in the victorian period's history in general you might find this a bit dry there are some victorian novels which age incredibly well and which tell stories which feel universal and relevant today like i think jane eyre and like some of dickens novels but this is very much a Victorian novel. It is entirely bound up in issues which are no longer as important. A lot of the kind of morality things it deals with are quite timeless, but because it is so bound up in church politics, it is a very, very Victorian novel. And I think it's only for someone who loves Victorian literature and the Victorian period a lot. However, I do very much recommend the other three Anthony Trollope novels I have read, which I think age better, which are The Way We Live Now, he knew he was right and Rachel Ray and I really want to read more by Anthony Trollope because he does have a wonderful writing style. Next I read The Strange Case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. Much like Alice in Wonderland I had an idea of this in my head before I started reading it which wasn't necessarily that accurate. If you don't know the basic premise of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde is that a man Dr Jekyll who is a scientist and a doctor creates this kind of chemical thing that when he drinks it he turns into another side of himself so he kind of splits himself in two and one half of himself is the kind of sensible middle class educated professional kind dr jekyll and the other half is a kind of baser crueler violent less refined character called mr hyde the interesting thing about this book which i didn't know is that it is not told from the perspective of dr jekyll it's all seen from the perspective of like a friend of dr jekyll which means you don't quite know what's going on all the time which i really liked i found this a really engaging and interesting book with a lot of very interesting themes i think it's very interesting in terms of the ways you can read dr jekyll and mr hyde and what that kind of division of one man into two means as someone that's quite interested in like darwinism and the effect darwinism had on the 19th century i was reading it as kind of you know like if humans are descended from apes then surely that means there is some like animal nature inside us however i was talking to my boyfriend about this book and he pointed out that you can also read it as dr jekyll being like the depiction of middle class goodness and mr hyde being the depiction of like working class evil and maybe actually the book is just like a really nasty comment on social class and basically um stevenson saying that he doesn't like working class people and that they're evil and that made me really sad but i think you can kind of read it like that the next thing i read was under the greenwood tree by thomas harvey which i did really enjoy while the warden was not a good place to start with anthony trollope i actually think this is a really good place to start with thomas hardy it's less bleak and it's less dark than his other novels i think this would make a really good introduction to thomas hardy and that you could read it and get used to his writing style without having your heart systematically crushed into tiny pieces i love thomas hardy a great deal but he often breaks my heart this however is much lighter in tone and a probably a much easier read i'd say than his other novels it's not unambiguously happy at all but it's much less dark which for me it means it would probably be a good place to start with Hardy but also means it wasn't my favourite of his novels because I think he does deal with dark and bleak subject matters very very well. I don't think it's Hardy's best novel but I would recommend it as a good place to start. And next I read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, another book that I should have read a long time ago and it's taken me a really long time to get to. This is not Victorian, this was written in 1818 but does have quite a lot of similar themes to Victorian novels. Like with Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde I had this idea in my head of stuff I knew about Frankenstein which wasn't quite right. If you don't know, Victor Frankenstein is a young scientist who 
while experimenting as a student, manages to create a being and bring a creature to life who is made of dead body parts, effectively. And then he runs off terrified of what he has done, and the monster follows him and tracks him down, etc. I think the main preconception I had, which was incorrect, was about the personality of Frankenstein. I think Frankenstein in like popular culture or like the play I saw at the National is very much presented as really arrogant kind of playing god, a really like horrible, not horrible but a really emotionally distant science obsessed man. But he as a character he's much more naive and much less arrogant than I was expecting which was actually really interesting. It's a very interesting book in many ways not only because of the idea of the monster and the themes it deals with of like whether people are evil by default or by what is done to them. It's also a very interesting book in terms of narrative structure because it is a frame narrative. It begins with the letters of an explorer Walton to his sister and within these letters he includes the account of a man he's met called Frankenstein and then within Frankenstein's account we get an account of the monster's life. So yeah I definitely recommend Frankenstein I think it's really interesting to read the original book because it is a book whose ideas have loomed so large in popular culture so it's really interesting to actually read it and find out what the original text is like. And actually that brings us on quite nicely to the final classic I read this month which was Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell because in Mary Barton there is at one point a reference to Frankenstein and Elizabeth Gaskell refers to the monster as Frankenstein. Obviously that's a really common misconception that we have in society today and a lot of people refer to the monster shorthand as Frankenstein. It was just absolutely fascinating to find that that was already being done and already being thought just a mere like 30 years after Frankenstein was published. But anyway, moving on to actually talking about Mary Barton. Oh Elizabeth Gaskell, how I love her. This is my favourite classic of the month. I love Elizabeth Gaskell, she's brilliant, her writing is amazing, her characters are wonderful and she's just captures like the social issues of the 19th century in such a poignant and impressive and fascinating way. Mary Barton focuses on the families of the industrial working class in Manchester in the 1840s when it was written. The book deals with a lot of social issues and it, in part it is about factory politics and poverty and the struggles that the working class poor in Manchester had to go through in the 19th century. I think this is just an incredible powerful, brilliant book and I love Elizabeth Gaskell so much. It's interesting, I often think of Elizabeth Gaskell as a kind of later, more political Jane Austen, but actually, although I think North and South and Wives and Daughters have an awful lot in common with Jane Austen novels, this to me was more akin to like George Gissing or Thomas Hardy in the like really dark themes that it deals with. If you've read North and South and you're interested in the plotline of the Higgins family you will definitely love Mary Barton. It is a brilliant book and I need to read even more by Elizabeth Gaskell because I just love her so much, she's amazing. So those all the classics I read this month, or the novels of the long 19th century. I have this thing where when I talk about books I find it hard to stop talking and when I talk about 19th century books I find it impossible to stop talking. So I'm sorry if this was a very long rambly video. My The second part of my October wrap up where I talk about all the contemporary reads I read this month will be up shortly. Please let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. In the meantime, happy reading and thank you for bearing with all my Victorian ramblings.